Good morning, Christ United. It is a joy to be with you once again this morning, worshiping even though we are distant still. It is a joy to be together on this day that the Lord has made. Some announcements that we have, um, I would highly encourage you guys to take advantage of this first one, especially as we are gearing back up for the fall season. And while our fall season looks a little bit different this year since we're not gathering together in the worship service and have a, all of our fun kickoffs for um, the start of faith formation and the start of school again, I do want to lift up family camping at Temple Hills. They are allowing people to come in either to do some day hiking um, around the campgrounds and just come in and hike for a couple of hours, and that is $5 per person, um, and you need to register on the website before you can go in, and they're having that open until September 7th. I highly encourage anybody who is just wanting to get out into the beautiful woods and the beautiful creation of God that might be looking for a new location that's not one of the metro parks that you have used so often the, in these past few months to possibly check out Templed Hills. They also, last I knew, had been allowing you to rent out cabins so you could even stay the night for about $75 um, just for the night and you got to cook out there and have a good time that way. So please do check that out. Next, we would like to welcome and encourage everybody to join us next Sunday at 3 p.m. Again, that's next Sunday, August 23rd at 3 p.m. via Zoom for a blessing of the pets. Um, it's going to look a little bit differently this year. We were trying to figure out how we could do it in the parking lot as a drive through blessing of the pets, and we just weren't sure we could make that happen. And so we're going to do it on Zoom this year, which is going to be a lot of fun. It means that any of your bigger animals that you might not be able to ordinarily cart in, you can now have be blessed over Zoom. Um, so please let us know if you would like to be a part of that. And if you have friends or family who would like to have their pets blessed as well, please encourage them to join us so that we can have a fantastic blessing of the pets. The 11th annual Sun Halter Tool Drive is going to be happening coming up. Habitat for Humanity will be taking donations of tools and construction materials, and they're asking for those to be dropped off over at the Berea Rec Center. And these are going to be benefiting the greater Cleveland area. So if you have any tools that you're not currently using, or if you're doing some spring cleaning or gearing up to have some construction work done and just need to get some of your old tools or any construction material that you might have out of your house, please, please consider donating it to this program so that they can help others in the area that might be looking for tools and things like that so that they can do construction work in their own home. The Heartland Conference will be having an anti-racism network conference call, which is an open invitation from the Reverend Dave Long Higgins. So if you would like to be a part of that anti-racism network, please contact the Reverend Dave Long Higgins so that he can get you involved in that. As usual, keep an eye out on the emails that Betsy sends out, and if anything else comes up, it will be in one of those emails. But these are the announcements that I have for this week. And so, hearing that our announcements are finished, let us turn our hearts and our minds to worship with our call to worship. God has forgiven us and drawn us close. Reconciling us through Jesus Christ who has lavished upon us the fullness of the blessed Holy Spirit with glad and grateful hearts. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. Again, I say praise the Lord. Our opening hymn this morning is Let Us Build a House or All Are Welcome, and it is by Marty Haugen. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built on hopes and dreams and visions, 
Rock of faith and vault of grace. Hear the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true. Where all God's children dare to seek, to dream God's reign anew. Here the cross shall stand as witness, and as symbol of God's grace. Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where love is found in water, wine, and wheat. A banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Hear the outcast, hear the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space. As we share in Christ's love, peace that frees us, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone. To heal and strengthen, serve and teach, where then live the word they've known. Hear the outcast and the stranger, bear the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and danger. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all are named, their songs and visions heard and loved and treasured, taught and claimed as words within the word. Built of tears and cries and laughter, prayers of faith and songs of grace. Let us ha let this house proclaim from floor to rafter. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Knowing that we often forget that all are welcome, that all are included, and that God's house has plenty of room for each and every one of us, and we have each been named. Let us come together before God to name the things that are keeping us from bringing the gospel to one another and from keeping one another from God's house. Holy, Holy God, God, we confess, we confess that, that we do not always love our neighbor. neighbor. We even to the that, that we have despised others, even, even to the point, point of, of hatred. hatred. We confess, we confess that, that we have been hurt by others. We confess that forgiveness and reconciliation at times are just impossible for us. We know, we know that, that nothing is impossible to you. you. We come to you seeking healness, healing and wholeness for us. Help us whenever possible to live in peace with others to seek reconciliation and healing and forgiveness. For your Son came and lived among us, was betrayed and denied, abused and put to death. He rose again and came with the message of peace to those who had denied him and abandoned him. May we walk in his ways. Amen.
For nothing is impossible with God. There is no place you can go, no end of the earth you can run, where God cannot find you. There is nothing on earth or beyond death that can separate you from the love of God. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, you are forgiven. You are loved. You are reconciled to God. Go and live with the love of God. Amen. Brian has once again submitted an anthem for this week, and this time he is stepping it up a little bit. He is both singing and accompanying himself as he sings Draw the Circle Wide. for your gift of music. At this time, we move into the prayers of the people, and we have uh, a few prayer requests that have come through our inboxes and have been, uh, have been passed along throughout the week that we wanted to share. And as always, uh, if there are prayer requests that, that you have that you would like to, to have lifted up, please make sure you put those in the comments section of, of this video, uh, both on here or on YouTube. Uh, Facebook and or YouTube uh, are the two places that we stream. And uh, Betsy does a great job of checking on those comment sections and making sure that those uh, additional requests get listed in the emails that are sent out and get passed along to the prayer team and to us. Um, so again, if there are prayer requests, um, without getting into too much specifics so that we can respect privacy, do please post those in the comments. Or if you want to go into more detail, if there is more information that you feel needs to be shared, please send those to Betsy and uh, the prayer team or to us and indicate um, how you would like that prayer request to be communicated. 
We want to hold in prayer uh, Nancy Lee and Brian Bowser uh, as Nancy's brother, Bishop Leonard Gaugler, passed away. And if I mispronounced that, I apologize. Um, we also want to continue to pray for uh, Rick Kershaw's brother, Dave, as he is recovering from heart surgery. Um, and we also uh, had a request that we pray for uh, a young girl named Nora, uh, and she is awaiting a heart transplant. So prayers for both her and also prayers for um, whatever child is, is going to uh, potentially become the donor for Nora's new heart and for their family as uh, that, will, that will be a loss that uh, ultimately brings life to another person. We want to continue in prayer for Dan and Judy Goodwin. Uh, I brought them up last Sunday. I had received a, uh, a message from a young clergy colleague in the denomination uh, who she is all the way out in California and asked for prayers for her second cousin who is from Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, Judy and Dan are now here in Cleveland for uh, a time as uh, Dan has encountered some, some issues and was air transported here to the Cleveland Heart Hospital. Currently, uh, I just had an update from Judy today um, as we, uh, just before we were, we started recording. Uh, Dan is still relatively stable. He is receiving the best care that, that can be given, but um, the care that they are receiving, they know that they, could, they can receive just as well back in Greenville and still be surrounded by friends and family. And so they are trying to work through insurance companies and doctors and all of the, the processes that need to occur to be able to go home. And uh, so she's asking continued prayers. Also, she, her family has very generously set up a GoFundMe page. Um, initially, it was to raise money to help cover uh, the, the bills for hotel rooms as, Nan as uh, Judy is staying um, at a hotel near the hospital. Um, but now that GoFundMe has far surpassed the, the hotel bills and will be going to help cover the cost of the air flight uh, for Dan to go back to the hospital in Greenville. And uh, Judy informed me that that is going to be uh, in the vicinity of over $15,000. The GoFundMe page has raised a significant amount of money, and we give thanks to God for those who have given so far. I am reaching out to other local churches that uh, we can see if maybe we can come together and help this family in need, since it was a request specifically given from a colleague. But um, if, if there are any, any people who in this time happen to have um, the ability to, to give that assistance and, and feel that calling, uh, please get in touch with me and I will uh, gladly send you the link to that page. We also want to continue holding uh, Linda Alt's sister, Nancy, in prayer as she recovers from a stroke. Those are the prayer requests that I have. I know we uh, continue to hold Ben and Anna in our prayers as well, that Janice has, uh, whom Janice has mentioned in the last few weeks as they continue to recover and, and look, for, uh, look for ways to, uh, to get out of the hospital and get back into more stable conditions. Let us come together in prayer, and our prayer response that we will speak together is, hear our prayer, and that will be after you hear, Lord, in your mercy. So, something familiar. Merciful God, in love you created us, and in love you sustain us day after day. And so it is with confidence that we bring our prayers to you, knowing that you will hear and respond. We pray for those who are estranged from spouse or family, friends or neighbors, who find it difficult to forgive past wrongs done to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who for years have carried feelings of guilt or regret for something they did or something they neglected to do, who find it difficult to ask for forgiveness or to forgive themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
For those who find themselves far away from you, struggling to overcome their doubts or disillusionment, and who wonder how to find their way back. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those, some, for those watching someone they love try to cope with serious illness or injury, and who long for your miraculous intervention, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the many others in our world who are suffering this day from grief or loneliness, hunger, poverty, violence, addiction, illness, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain all those who look to you in hope and strengthen us, your people, so that we may be a light to all those who find themselves in darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's readings will be two, one from Genesis and one from Matthew. I will be reading from the New English Version of the Bible. And uh, the first re reading is Genesis 45, 1 through 15. This is about Joseph in Egypt. Joseph could no longer control his feelings in front of his attendants, and he called out, let, let everyone leave my presence. So there was no one present when jo jo Joseph made himself known to his brothers. But so loudly did he weep that the Egyptians and the Pharaoh's household heard him. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Can my father be still alive? His brothers were so dumbfounded at finding themselves face to face with Joseph that they could not answer. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer. And so they came close. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be distressed or take it amiss that you sold me into slavery here. It was God who sent me ahead of you to save men's lives. For there have now been two years of famine in the country, and there will be another five years with neither plowing nor harvest. Jesus sent me ahead of you to ensure that you will have descendants on earth and to preserve you all, a great band of survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God and he made me a, a counselor to Pharaoh, and lord over all his household and ruler of all Egypt. Make haste and go back to my father and give him this message from his son Joseph. God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall live in the land of Goshen and be near me, you, your sons and your grandsons, your flocks and herds and all that you have. I will take care of you there, you and your household and all that you have, and see that you are not reduced to poverty. There are still five years of famine to come. You can see for yourself, and so can my brother Benjamin. That is the Joseph himself who is speaking to you. Tell my father of all the honor which I enjoy in Egypt. Tell him all that you have seen and make haste to bring him down here. Then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin too embraced him weeping. He kissed all his brothers and wept over them. And afterwards his brothers talked with him. Now reading from Matthew 15, 10 to 28. 
He called the crowd and said to them, Listen to me, and understand this. A man is not defiled by what goes into his mouth, but by what comes out of it. Then the disciples came to him and said, Do you know that the Pharisees have taken great offense at what you have been saying? Their answer, his answer was, Any plant that is not of my heavenly Father's planting will be rooted up. Leave them alone. They are blind guides, and if one blind man guides another, they will both fall into the ditch. Then Peter said, Tell me what that parable means. Jesus answered, Are you still as dull as the rest? Do you not see that whatever goes in by the mouth passes into the stomach, and so is, dis is discharged into the drain? But what comes out of the mouth has its origins in the heart, and that is what defiles a man. Wicked thoughts, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, perjury, slander, these all proceed from the heart, and these are the things that defile a man. But to eat with, without first washing his hands, that cannot defile him. Jesus then left that place and withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from those parts came crying out, Sir, I have pity on me, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a devil. But he said not a word in reply. His disciples came and urged him, Send her away. See how she comes shouting after us. Jesus replied, I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and to them alone. But the woman came and fell at his feet and cried, Help me, sir. To this Jesus replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. True, sir, she answered. And yet the dogs eat the scraps that fall from their master's table. Hearing this, Jesus replied, Woman, what faith you have. Be it as you wish. And from that moment, her daughter was restored to health. Thus endeth the reading. Please pray with me. May the meditations of our hearts and our minds be holy and pleasing to you. And may the words of my mouth be those of yours, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When we're little children, we struggle to learn how to walk, how to tie our shoes, how to throw a ball, how to write. As we get older, we learn how to cook, how to wash clothes, and drive cars. For most of us, we don't get these skills on the first try. It takes time and time again. It takes persistence. It takes falling down and getting back up. But we're encouraged by our parents to get back up and try again until we get it. We can see the same perseverance in both of our scripture passages this morning. Last week, we saw that Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. Now, if I were Joseph, I probably would not be that thrilled with having been sold into slavery by my brothers. If we had continued to read, we would have seen that when Joseph's brothers came the first time, he sent them home to bring his brother Benjamin back so that he could see him for himself. Now all of the brothers are together again, and before Joseph tells his brothers what's happened, he accuses them of stealing. And he blames Benjamin, the youngest, to be the one that stole the silver cup. It's when, they're, when the brothers are defending Benjamin and saying, no, he couldn't possibly have done this, that Joseph finally realizes that his brothers have realized the error of what they did to him. And he falls to his knees crying and tells them all. God had used Joseph for good. God used this situation of Joseph, 
Joseph's brothers, selling him into slavery for good. Now, God didn't create the situation. Joseph's brothers did that. And God didn't create the situation where there was a famine. But God used Joseph's gifts of dreams, of interpreting dreams for good. God used Joseph's brothers' anger and frustration and jealousy at their brother for good. And it wasn't just the good of the Egyptians that this was put to use. No, it was for the good of all. It was for God's people, for this remnant that God said he would be with forever. And so when Joseph found himself in Egypt, instead of taking care of only Pharaoh and Pharaoh's people and those who supported Pharaoh, Joseph helped his family as well. He helped all who came and asked for assistance through the grain bins. Sometimes in our insane world, it seems that some lives are worth more than others, and some have less value. Some, such as African Americans, indigenous people, immigrants, seem to be considered second-class citizens in our world. Joseph's brothers probably had their own fears as they stood before their brother asking for food because they were starving. And once they realized the heartache that they had caused their father and the heartache that they had caused their brother selling him into slavery, they probably thought they didn't deserve a second chance. Pharaoh thought that only his own people and his supporters deserved to prosper and deserved the benefits of his grain. Kind of sounds like things that are going on in our society, doesn't it? But God had plans to make sure that all lives would prosper and grow. Just as God has plans that all people today will prosper, grow, thrive, even in the midst of a coronavirus. All lives, black lives, police lives, firefighters, indigenous people, and not just these groups, but all groups are being given the chance to thrive if only we could work together to make that happen and despite the obstacles placed before joseph he persisted in helping the egyptians with storing food so that they would have enough when the times were few despite using his gift from god to taunt his brothers with his superiority god persisted in using joseph in the right time and place God persisted in keeping that remnant alive, just as we are alive today for such a time as this. Persistence is sometimes considered a bad thing. When you forget all else in order to make your dream come alive, sometimes to the point that family, friends, all else are forgotten in order to pursue and to gain that one goal. Now, that seems to be the case that we find in our first gospel, find in our gospel lesson today. The woman calls out saying, show me mercy, son of David. Now, for whatever reason, Jesus doesn't answer the woman. Are the streets so crowded that Jesus never heard the woman's cries? That doesn't seem likely as the disciples tell Jesus to turn her away. So at least someone has heard the cries. Though it does seem likely that this woman has been following them for quite some time. When the woman first gets the cold shoulder from Jesus, she doesn't stop. The woman reminds me both of a woman who has a mind of her own and refuses to give up until she receives what she's after. But she also reminds me of others throughout the gospel. The woman who bled for 12 years, who wouldn't be persuaded until she touched the hem of Jesus' cloak. Or even the persistent widow who kept day by day going to the king and asking, begging for mercy. The story is often lifted up as a sign of the woman's faith, that she was relentless 
until she was given what she desired. That, as long as we have a persistent faith, we won't be denied. What if it's more than faith, though? Jesus not wanting to heal someone, not wanting to do anything for anyone that wasn't a part of his group, that was outside of the Jewish community? Did Jesus not know that he was supposed to come to all nations and be a voice in the wilderness for all? Jesus, after all, was a product of the community that he grew up in, a community that thought Canaanites were lesser people. We, too, are a product of our community and our nation and the society that has brought us up. We, too, have preconceived notions of what goes on around us. The woman asked a second time for mercy. The third time, you can kind of hear the woman getting a little bit sassy with Jesus, that not even the dogs will beg scraps from the master's table to eat, or that even the dogs will beg scraps from the master's table to eat. Calling her a dog wasn't the same as calling your beloved canine towards you. You know, the ones that are part of your family, the ones that you would do anything for. But rather would be a form of a racial slur, such as we might have calling someone Pocahontas, or perhaps calling someone boy. It isn't until now that Jesus speaks to the woman directly. Up until now, he has only interacted with his disciples, even though he's been speaking about and to the woman. But now, here, after she debates and spars with Jesus, he truly encounters the woman and tells her that her faith has healed her daughter. In this moment, we see Jesus realizing he was wrong. And he changes his mind. At Pub Theology this past week, one of the things that came up was that scripture has been used over the years to argue for different parts of things in history. The NRA uses it to say that they should be allowed to have arms. Christians on both sides of slavery have used it as ways to defend or deny that we should have slavery. In the same way, though, it's something, I loved how Augie said it, that it's okay to see these differences in the scriptures that at one point support, but at another discourage what we want to say. Because right here we have a human Jesus that shares that it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to have a faith of a child and when we grow up change our mind and see that we have learned that now we have a stronger deeper faith and our faith changes as we learn as we grow and as we experience life Jesus changed his mind we are reminded time and time again of the radical role reversal throughout the gospel. Time and time again, we see Jesus telling people that he has come not to the rich, but to the poor that are unwell. That the message of God's love is one to be brought not to the synagogues and the teachers, but to the women, to the children, to thieves, beggars, to those who are out sleeping in the gazebo at Co Lake to those sitting on the corners begging so that they can have food in their stomachs. For those who still fear having people call the police on them because of the color of their skin. Could this be why Jesus seems to be ignoring this woman, an outcast of the Jewish community? Yet in this passage, instead of Jesus being the one who turned the gospel on its head, it's the woman who shows us the change. The woman who understood Jesus ignoring her, ignoring the discrimination. Instead of allowing Jesus to continue to push her away, as so many other people had before, she persisted. 
until she gained his attention. She reminds everyone there, including Jesus, that the gospel isn't to be kept to that inner circle, to only those who are in the know. That it wasn't just for Jesus to decide who the gospel went to, or who the gospel would be given to, just as it's not up to us who we spend our time telling the gospel to. It took this determined, persistent woman to remind Jesus that we are all to be included in the love that God intended for all of humanity. How much more on the head could this story be than the rest of the gospel, and even Joseph being sold into slavery? Perhaps we all sat here with bated breath, worried that he wouldn't actually hear the woman's daughter. Did we ever think that? But the woman's faith and persistence are what have caused Jesus to turn and to have his mind changed. The gospel is for all, not just a few, not just the perfect, but for all. Oh, it's beautiful that it's for all, no matter what age we are, what our gospel understanding is, what we think the gospel means, or how we implement it into our lives. It is for all. Faith had played a role in today's story. Faith that Joseph is where he needed to be when he needed to be there. And that God had provided him the tools to benefit his people. And the woman's faith made her believe that Jesus could and ultimately would heal her daughter. But perseverance seems to be the connection between these passages and our very own lives. Joseph persevered despite being sold into slavery by his brothers. And he didn't give up when he found himself in jail. He continued to do his best, continue to use the gifts that God had given him. The woman unarmed when ignored by Jesus, both kept going until others benefited from their efforts. We're living in a world of uncertainty. War, famine, white supremacy, uncertainty and fear of what the coming election might bring uncertainty of when we can be gathered back together again for worship, uncertainty of when a vaccine for the virus will be coming. So many unknowns, and yet we have one truly known fact, that God is with us, that God might not be in our circumstances here, but God has given us the tools to work through and better ourselves and our community of faith through these circumstances. God has made it so that we can persist in this time so that we can help those who need help now. No matter who we are, where we are, God has given us exactly what we need for this time and place. Because God is with us. We have so many examples that have gone before us who have shown us how this can be done. Moses, Joseph, Martin Luther King, Desmond Tutu, the woman in our story, pastors and churches who have stood arm in arm, standing up against hate, standing up against those who say it's not okay to hate. It's not okay to keep people in their place. Instead, they're standing in prayer with their brothers and sisters for love and peace. All have persevered. All have shown us the way to push, to continue to move forward even when it seems the odds are against us, to push us until we hear Jesus say, that our faith has healed us. There is so much that we can do, even in our small communities, even when it seems that we are pushing a boulder uphill and that no progress is ever going to be made. 
we can still show love and grace, hospitality, showing that while others might have counted us out, might be saying that we're never going to be heard, so what's the point of going out? We are still here, and we are still able to do good in this time and place. We are here for those who need it, who don't know where else to turn, who are scared about what might be coming in the days and weeks and months ahead. For their sake and the world around us, let's not give up. Let's persist until everyone knows we are here. Let's persist until they know the name of Jesus Christ and it is on their lips from morning till night. Let us persist in this time and place. Let us persist and be the church. To God be the glory. Amen. Friends, we continue to be thankful each week as we remember the blessings that we have received. We thank God for the ministry of Church Street Ministries and the work that they are doing to distribute food to those in our communities who are hungry. We also remember the ministries of Christians in Action and Berea Cares and so many other local organizations uh, from the Salvation Army in Strongsville to um, all, all different communities that have these opportunities where people are being given assistance. And I am pleased to say that the governing board is in the process of looking at how we as a church, not just as individuals, but as a church, can contribute to those needs and use the gifts that God has given us and that we have been faithful stewards of and have helped to cultivate in our own community. And now we have the opportunity to use those gifts to help others in need. And so we're looking at ways that we can contribute to both Christians in Action in Olmstead Falls to Berea Cares in, uh, in the Berea community and in ways that we can help with utility bills, with food needs, pot uh, potentially through the Hunger Network and through the Greater Cleveland Food Bank, all these other opportunities. Um, these are things that are on, uh, on the radar for us and that uh, we wanted to lift up and make sure you are aware of uh, as, they will, as uh, they will be communicated in the governing board minutes as well but uh, things that we wanted to share that those discussions are happening, especially after uh, we've had some very good and uh, deep discussions both in our digital coffee hour and in our pub theology groups and in our Christian education and information classes uh, that are helping to shape us and help us figure out what God is up to with us as Christ united in this time of COVID. Christ has provided for us from his own table of blessings. Anointing and abundance overflows, and so we invite you to offer our gifts together from the bounty that Christ has given us. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you have given us more mercy than we could imagine and more blessings than we deserve. Receive now these gifts as tokens of our gratitude to you, that your mercy may be multiplied and your blessings abound to embrace all those in need. Amen. Our closing hymn today is by the Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and it is called, Goodness is Stronger Than Evil. Goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than darkness, life is stronger than death. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through God who loves us. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through God who loves us. Goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness, life is stronger than death. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through God who loves us. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through
true God who loves us. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through God who loves us. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through God who loves us. The gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. God has gifted you with forgiveness and graced you with reconciliation. Go now and share God's gifts with the distressed and estranged. Christ has called you close to him and healed you from torment. Go now and call others to receive Christ's mercy and healing. And now may the God who forgives, reconciles, heals, and blesses be with you now and evermore. To God be the glory. Amen. <laughs>